Hello everyone. You are welcome to Good Success in English. This is Benjamin here and in today's video lesson we are discussing 20 rules for using English nouns. A noun is usually a word, a naming word, a word that identifies a person or a thing or an idea. It could be a place. Lagos is a noun. Man is a noun. Ben or John or Rose, these are nouns. But then you have a box, a book, these are nouns. Simple as they seem to be, uh, they are always misused. There are different grammatical errors arising from the wrong use of English nouns. And this is as a result of ignorance of the rules governing the use of nouns in English. Like I've always said, English language, like every other language, is governed by a set of rules. And when you violate or break the rules, the result is ungrammaticality. So it becomes necessary for us to examine or take a close look at these rules for using English nouns. Of course, we, in a series of videos, we shall be talking about rules of English in various aspects of English language. But today we are zeroing in on the, uses, the use of nouns and the rules that govern the use of nouns. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be promptly notified. Let's get started with today's topic, uh, 20 rules for using English nouns. Of course, you have these links to Amazon.com. Today's video, video lesson is centered around a book I have published on Amazon.com and it is entitled Good Success in English. You might want to buy the complete ebook so you can take the link here, copy the link here and then paste on any Google search engine. It will take you to Amazon.com and then you will find my books displayed on the bookshelf on Amazon.com so you can pick any one you want. The book that we have taken to this lesson from is Good Success in English. And you have details of various aspects of English learning in that wonderful English handbook. It's a book that everyone who desires to learn English needs to have. So let's get started. Of course, again, you can use my email address, benjamininfo33 at gmail.com. You can write to me via this email address requesting for a copy of the book if you are here in nigeria then you can pay a token of 1000 naira and i will send you the electronic copy of the book right into your email box and then you can download it to your ipad to your laptop or to your phone or any electronic device that you are using so let's get started 20 rules for using english nouns number one Countable nouns can be used with the indefinite article and they have a plural form. A common noun is in, uh, I mean a, a countable noun as the name implies is a word referring to anything that can be counted. Example, a book, a chair, a man. Then of course you have another indefinite article like an. You can see an elephant, an egg, an aeroplane. Then it can be pluralized by adding S. You can have books, you can have chairs, or the plural form that just changes the middle vowel, like men. When you have one man, then you have two men. One book, two books, or more. So that's exactly about uh, countable nouns. Two, Uncountable noun, an uncountable noun has only one form, not singular and plural forms. So an uncountable noun is a word that refers to something that you cannot count. 
You cannot count water, for instance. You know, it's uncountable. So it doesn't have plural and singular forms as we saw in the, in the countable now. Let's take examples. Mm. So it can be used with or without a determiner. Let's see the examples. Give me water to drink, you know. You cannot say give me a water to drink because water is uncountable. But you can say give me some water to drink. You can talk of much water or a lot of water or plenty of water or little water, etc. But it is wrong to say a water. An advice, of course, you hear a lot of people increasingly committing this grammatical error. Even people whom you think they should know better are increasingly telling you, I have an advice for you. You know, that is, is ungrammatical because advice is uncountable. So you cannot talk of an advice or you cannot talk of advices. The same with rice. You cannot talk of a rice. You cannot talk of a furniture. You can also not talk of advices or rices or furniture, etc. So those are uncountable nouns. They cannot be pluralized. But there is only one unique way of trying to pluralize them, which we are going to see in rule number three. You only pluralize uncountable nouns by using partitives, that is, words or phrases that show a part or quantity of something, e.g. two slices of bread. It's wrong to say, give me one bread. No, bread is uncountable. You can only use a partitive, slices or loaves, two pinches of salt. You cannot talk of, give me a salt. You can talk of three spoonfuls of sugar or three cubes of sugar. Not give me a sugar or give me sugars. It's completely wrong. Two pieces of meat. Don't say give me a meat or give me one meat. People get to a restaurant and say give me one meat. That is ungrammatical. Give me a piece of meat or two pieces of meat. Drops of water. You know, bits of information. Don't say I have an information for you. No, it's ungrammatical. Items of furniture, pieces of jewelry, loaves of bread, etc. Number four, when an uncountable noun is used as the subject of a verb, the verb is singular. You know, that is an uncountable noun. It uses a singular verb. Let's take example. Honey is sweet. You cannot say honey are. Ah. The verb here is singular because honey is uncountable. The money has been paid into the account. You know, you cannot say the money have, even if it is millions of dollars or billions, is still, you know, money is still, is, uh, I mean, is still in this sense uh, an uncountable noun. So, water, but of course you can use, uh, you know, you can use uh, partitives, you know, you can use partitives to talk about it, you know, and even when you talk of a thousand dollars or a million naira, you know, water is essential to life. That is, it takes always the singular form. Number five, some invariable nouns ending in S take singular verbs. Example, news. You cannot say news is. You cannot say news are. The news are, no. News is, it, it always ends in S, and you think it is plural, but it's not. So it takes a singular verb. Brussels is a country. Wales. You can say United States is a superpower nation. Not the United States are. United Nations takes singular. Athens. You cannot say mathematics are my best subjects. No, because it ends in S. It's singular. Mathematics is my favorite subject. Physics is. Economics is. Linguistics is the study of languages. Class, classics. Measles is a disease. Rashes. Rickets is. So you, you take note of those uh, English words that end in S, but 
they are always used as singular and we take a singular verb. Number six, some abstract nouns are uncountable when used in a general sense but countable in a particular sense. You know, uh, when you talk of an abstract noun, an abstract noun is a word that refers to something that you cannot see or touch, such as love, peace, you know, uh, experience. You can't see it. Education, health, you can't see things like that, you know. So they are abstract. And so they are uncountable when used in a general sense, but countable in a particular sense. For instance, Mike hasn't got enough experience for the job. It's uncountable here. You know, it's used in a general sense. He hasn't got enough experience. So you cannot say he hasn't got enough experiences because experience here is used as uncountable. But you can say it was a strange experience because it's, un it's countable now because it's referring to a particular instance of experience, you know, a particular experience, particular moment or a particular period in time, you know. You can say time waits for nobody. It's uncountable when you are using time in the general sense. But you can say the couple had a good time. Take the word beauty, for instance. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is used in a general sense there. But you can say that rose is a beauty to behold. So you can singularize it when you, it now refers to a particular person. Number seven, some uncountable nouns are plural, uh, are plural. Some uncountable nouns are plural. They have no singular forms, you know. Take note of this. Some uncountable nouns are plural, you know. They have no singular forms, e.g. arms. They are uncountable, but they always appear in a, in in, in plural form. Customs, groceries, tanks, etc. They are uncountable, but they always end with S. Eight, uncountable nouns are sometimes used in the plural to, in the plural form to convey specific meanings. You know, when we pluralize a, some, some uncountable nouns, we give them special meanings. Like when we say waters, we know water is uncountable, but when we now make it waters, it takes a new meaning. It's used to refer to rivers, lakes, seas, or oceans. There are different sources of water in a country. You can talk of, e.g., on Nigerian waters. In this case, we are talking of all the sources of water, different sources of water in Nigeria, water in the river, water in the lake, water in the sea, and so on. So you can say waters. B, works. We know that work, the, 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 the noun work is always, uh, is always uncountable. But when we, make, we pluralize it, we give it a special meaning. Uh, so, and then it's used to refer to books, music, paintings, or art that is produced. E.g., you can talk of the works of Chinua Achebe, the works of Wolen Shoinka, the works of you know, so that is exactly. Then another example, fishes. When we pluralize fish, we know that fish is always uncountable when we, in a general sense. You cannot get to a restaurant and say, give me uh, two fishes. Uh, people will tell you, give me two fish, and that is also wrong. Give me two pieces of fish in the general sense. But when we now pluralize it and say fishes, we give it a, a different, a new meaning. And in this sense, it is used to refer to different species of fish, such as catfish, uh, tilapia, crayfish, shark, and so on. So if you say there are many fishes in the river, you are talking of different types of fish that you can find in a river. You can find a catfish there, you can find a tilapia there, you can find crayfish there, different types of fish. And so that is the when we say fishes instead of fish. Number nine, some nouns can be both countable and uncountable. 
E.G. Rose likes coffee. That is uncountable. Coffee, in a general sense, is uncountable. But then it becomes countable when we use it in the sense of example B. Can I get you a coffee? Here, we are using coffee to mean a cup of coffee. The same thing with tea, you know. Uh, I want to have a tea, you know. You are talking of a cup of tea, not tea in the general sense. That is uncountable, you know. So, get the idea down on paper. Paper is uncountable, you know, when you talk of the material, paper is uncountable. You can only cut paper into pieces, but you can't count paper as material. But then it can become countable when we give it a special meaning, when it means something else. Candidates must answer two questions from each paper. That means a set of printed questions in an exam, in an exam, and it becomes countable, you know. So in English language exams, you can have paper one, paper two, paper three, so you can have like three papers. Again, you know, somebody can deliver a paper. Paper can also have another meaning, like the kind of the lecture you deliver. You know, I deliver the paper, you know. So, and so on. Number 10, uh, a collective noun takes a singular verb when the reference is to a group acting in a collective fashion, and a plural verb when the reference is to members of a group acting as individual members. E.g., a new family has moved in next door. So, a collective noun is a, a word referring to a group of things or a group of persons. A family is a group of persons who are related, uh, you know, who are related biologically or, if you like, by adoption. And you can have a team of players, that's another collective now. You, have, you can have a class of students, you can have a committee of men. You know, so when you have a group, then it can become, it is used as singular when we are looking at the family, at, at, the, at the group acting as a single unit. Like when you say a family has moved in next door, you are looking at one family as a unit. And that's why you use the singular verb has. A family has, a new family has moved in. But then in another sense, if we are looking at the actions of members of the family, then it becomes plural. The family are always fighting among themselves, you know. When you say the class is always quiet or you, the class is always noisy, you are looking at the class as a single unit, as a group. But when you say, you know, uh, the, the class are always making noise and running all over the place. You are talking of the, the students in that class. You are looking at their individual actions. Okay, number 11, rule number 11, pluralia tantum. These are nouns that only occur in the plural and take plural verbs, you know. Take note of this, they are called pluralia tantum. They always occur in plural forms and they take plural verbs, e.g. areas, amends, archives, arms, all species, bowels, dregs, earnings, fireworks, fonts, quarters, regards, particulars, the remains, the remains of the, of the elder statement have been brought back to the country, not has, the remains have, you know, riches, savings, thanks, etc., you know. So they, they take plural verbs and they are always plural in form. You, you can, you, you know, they are always in plural form. You cannot say the remain, but always the remains. You cannot say the saving, it is always the savings, you know. Number 12. Summation plurals. These are nouns 
referring to tools and articles that consist of two equal parts joined together, and they can be used with partitives, such as a pair of scissors, three pairs of trousers, etc. You know, you cannot say, uh, you know, I want one trousers, uh, I want one scissors. No, it's always a pair of, you know. Then you have other examples which include spectacles, pants, jeans. You can talk of a pair of pajamas, pliers, knickers, shorts, etc. Number 13, some nouns in ES, you know, can be treated as singular or plural, e.g., you can talk of one or two series of lectures. You can talk of a race species of beetle. You can talk of many species of dogs, etc. So they can be used in singular or plural form, as the case may be. Fourteen, the noun modified by the genitive may be omitted if the context makes its identity clear. The genitive here refers to the S that indicates ownership. For instance, uh, my bag is bigger than Regina's. You know, instead of saying my bag is better than Regina's bag, you know, you can simply say my bag is bigger than Regina's. So it can be omitted because the identity is already uh, clear. It's implied there. Then B, I shall be at the dentist's. You may not have to say the dentist's clinic, the dentist this, no. You just, you know, the, the meaning is implied. So it can be neatly omitted in, in English use. Fifteen, in a double genitive, an of genitive can be combined with the S genitive. We are now talking of ownership. You know, e.g., a friend of the lawyers has arrived. You know, if you juxtapose it with uh, uh, the simple uh, uh, pronoun like mine or yours, you cannot say a friend of me. You can only say a friend of mine. You cannot say a friend of you. You can only say a friend of yours. So, uh, a friend of the lawyers has arrived. So, you have double genitive. You can combine the of and the s. B, a daughter of Mrs. Okafos has arrived. You know, a daughter of Mrs. Okafos. You know, when you look at it, it may look tautological, but that is the way English is. It's the uniqueness of English. That double genitive is acceptable in English usage. C, any, sons, any son of Mr. Balogun's is welcome. Number 16, some temporal nouns can take the S genitive, e.g., a moon spay. You know, some common nouns, you know, can just, you can, you can, you can give it uh, this possessive uh, apostrophe and S. A moon spay, a week's holiday, today's business, a moment's thought. So it's acceptable in English usage. 17. When more than is used with a number, the number that comes after more than determines the verb, e.g., more than two teachers are required. What if you have more than one teacher? What do you have? Let's look at it. More than one teacher is required. So if you have more than, what comes after it? If it is singular, it will take a singular verb. If it is plural, it will take a plural verb. Number 18. When every is followed by a plural noun, the verb is plural. But when it is followed by a singular noun, the verb is singular. E.g., every 50 cartons of spaghetti you buy carry a bonus of an extra carton. Every 50 cartons, you know, this, uh, this 50 cartons is plural, coming after every. And that's why it will take a plural verb, carry. Every 50 cartons of spaghetti you buy, carry a bonus of an extra carton. Let's look at when a, a singular 
uh, now comes after every. Then you have every carton of spaghetti you buy carries a bonus of one packet. So every carton, because the carton is singular, coming after every, then the verb is singular. Every carton of spaghetti you buy carries a bonus of one packet. Number 19, when a number of is used, usually with a plural noun, it takes a plural, it takes plural verb, but where the number of is used, it takes a singular verb. Take note of a number of and the number of. When it's a number of and it's fo always followed by a plural, and of course, the plural verb applies. Let's look at example. A number of robbery suspects have been arrested. Have is a plural verb. A number of robbery suspects have been arrested. But then you have the number of lunatics has increased in our society. Once you have the number, if you have, uh, you know, also if you are talking of uh, you can say the number of armed robbery cases in our society has increased. Once you have the number, definite article D, it makes it singular. The number of, you know, you can say, well, the number of women giving birth to children uh, monthly in our country is, is quite astonishing, you know, the number of. All right, 20. The uh, nominalized adjectives used as noun phrases usually take a plural verb but cannot be pluralized by adding S. What do we mean by nominalized adjectives? When you add the definite article to an adjective, you nominalize it. And nominalize, nominalization means the, the act of turning uh, a word from another word class into a noun. When you use an adjective as a noun, by adding the definite article, the, you, you make it a noun phrase. For instance, you can say the beautiful, the ugly, the rich, the poor, the wise, the, the, the foolish, you know. So let's look at how they are used. You know, the poor are there in all sections of our society. You cannot say the poor is. You know, whenever you say the poor, it's always... It has a plural, it refers to all the, the poor people. When you say the beautiful, it refers to many, not one person. So it's, it's, it's always in plural form. It takes a plural verb. And again, you cannot say the pause. So you can pluralize it by adding S. You cannot say the pause, the blinds, the wises, you know? No. It's always singular, but it has a plural meaning. Other examples include the blind, not the blinds, the dead, not the deads, the strong, not the strongs, the weak, not the weaks, the good, not the goods, the bad, not the bads, and the ugly, not the uglies. You know, so, and it always takes a plural verb. So this is how it has been on today's video. Don't forget that this video lesson is centered around an e-book I have written entitled good success in English. And if you want to have a copy of the complete book, you can copy uh, the, the link I have here. This link is, for, is showing you the online address of Amazon.com. And if you paste this on any Google or search engine, of course, it will take you to Amazon Bookshelf and you will find uh, good success in English, then you can buy it. You know, there are other books I have published on Amazon.com, many of them, you know, so you can pick the one you want. Alternatively, you can write me through my email address, benjamininfo33 at gmail.com. If you write to me with this email address, requesting for a copy of Good Success in English, of course, I will send you a copy. You only have to pay a token of 1,000 Naira if you want to pay in Naira. Of course, that will be cheaper for you. So that's how it has been. We have been talking about uh, 20 rules for using 
English nouns and we have been able to do justice to that. Uh, I want you to remember the rules we discussed today. In other series of videos, we shall keep discussing the rules of English language, different aspects of English language. It is in this platform we discuss English. We make it easier for people to learn English language. And so don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can always get a notification as soon as a new video is uploaded. I want to thank you for watching today's video. Remain blessed, stay safe, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.